Hello, my name is Phil Davison. I'm going to take you through this tutorial on Photoshop. So here we have, uh, we've got several images open. We have this building one, clouds, and the seagull. And we're going to put these together. The building is going to become the background. So first step is to put them all together into uh, one file. So click on the seagull. We'll select the move tool, or we could just hit V to get the move tool. And now I'm going to drag it across to the building. When the building opens, I'll drag it into place and let go. And there it is. And we have a new layer. This seems to be a somewhat tricky technique. Um, people often have trouble with this one. Um, it's a kind of a knack, I guess. So again, here we are. I'm going to drag it up to the building layer, hold it over the layer, and there it is. And now what I will do is I will put that in place. There it is, and I'll hide it. Now, gone. Right, and this one here, I need to select the layer that I want to use. Now, we're the, now we'll see how often we use the layers palette here. I need to select the layer we want to use, which is this one. And I'm going to give it a new name. I'm going to call it Flying Gull. And this one, double click. Double click, there it goes, and I'll call this one Clouds. Now, if I only had um, these three layers, I probably wouldn't bother changing the names. But if you get more and more layers, it really helps you to stay organized if you can know which one is which. The layers on top obscure the ones underneath. So if I click on Clouds, there it is, it's covering everything. If I click on it again, this little icon here, as it says here, it indicates layer visibility. It's like a little eye it's supposed to be. It becomes invisible or visible, and whatever's on top obscures what's underneath. Now I'd like to move the seagull across a little bit. So I'm going to click on the layer and drag it across. I've still got the move tool selected. Now obviously it's important that whatever layer you select is the layer you're going to be working on. OK, now we want to get rid of this blue here. The blue is not particularly useful. So making sure we have Flying Gull layer selected. Select Color Range. Now what we want is Sample Colors. We'll click on here, we'll click a nice patch of blue. And now it's showing us what's selected. Right, so we can see that the gull selected nothing much else. We can adjust you see, if we take the fuzziness down, we're getting it's being more precise about what color of blue. I mean, now it's saying, okay, you only want those pixels of blue, or do you want anything that looks vaguely like blue? If we take it too far up here, we're starting to see some detail in the in the bird. So it's taking every bluish pixel pixel that I can find out of the bird. We don't want that. We want to get a nice solid black on white. I think that will do us. Okay. And now we've got our marching ants showing us that what showing us what is selected. And I'm just going to hit the delete key. And it's gone. And now I'll hit Command D to deselect. And now we have our seagull. Now let's just zoom in a little bit closer here. If you look closely, there's a lot of little bits of blue that are from the sky where it's sort of shining through the bird's feathers. So we're going to go here, image adjustments. Selective color, and we're going to look at the science. And I take the cyan slider right the way down, and a lot of that blue is gone. Let's just look at the difference. More of it, just that subtle shading of blue, and a lot of it goes away. Okay, let's zoom back out, command minus, now we'll select the clouds layer and we'll put this to screen mode and suddenly we've got this murky look. The screen mode means that anything that's dark will become transparent, anything that's light will be opaque. The main blend mode you're going to use in your whole Photoshop career will be screen mostly uh, and multiply depending on what you actually want to do. Multiply has made the light parts transparent and the dark bits opaque. And sometimes you'll use overlay, but pretty much once in a blue moon. Overlay means that white 
white and black are opaque and middle grey is transparent. But typically the ones you seem to use all the time are screen and multiply. These other ones you can pretty much ignore them for most of your work. There are some special occasions where they're useful but I would think that screen multiply and overlay will do you for most of the things you'll ever want to do. So let's look back at screen. We could also use the opacity and just make it less intense. But what I want to do is I want to create, I want to have these clouds, uh, um, some areas of cloud and some areas that are completely transparent. So what we want to do is we want to make the, we want to adjust the contrast of the clouds image so that the blue is darker, or the dark bits are darker and the white bits are whiter. Image, adjustments, curves, and here's our curves control and I'm going to really savagely go jump. Now, I want, now I want to make sure that I don't have that as a flat line there. I want that to be just a little bit less than a flat line around there otherwise I'll crush the whites and I'll have no detail on the whites. But I don't mind crushing the blacks. I don't mind having everything that's down here being made to be completely black. Maybe that should be across a little bit. I'll try moving this back a little bit and this one can come in too there we go okay and we've got a lot more uh, we can see a lot more of the building this part down here is a bit on the blue side so I'm going to put a um, transparency there first thing I'll do is I'll hit D and D has made the foreground and back foreground and background colors go to hard white, hard black. If I've got them the wrong way around, I can hit X, which will change them. That reverses the colors. It makes the foreground background and the background foreground. So now I'll hit X again and put them back where they used to be. And I'm going to put a gradient down the bottom on the clouds layer to make this part of the image here darker. So gradient tool. And this has come up correct straight away. Uh, what I want, I want the one which is black to transparent. So that would be black to white. I don't want that. I want black to transparent. I don't want any of these other funny colors. That'll do fine. And I'll come down here and I will draw myself a gradient halfway up the screen. There we go. Nice and clear at the bottom. Now we've still got some blue in these clouds which are making them look a little bit fake. So we've still got our clouds selected. Uh, we can desaturate them because we don't want any color in the clouds. The clouds are just going to be either white or not white. Image, adjustments, hue, saturation. Now we only really want to deal with the blues. So let's go to the blues. And now we will take the lightness right down and the saturation right down. And now our clouds have become a lot more realistic. I don't really like um, the fact that the seagull is obscured by the clouds. So let's flip that. And what we'll do that, we'll just go edit, transform, flip horizontal. Now our clouds on the other side, the seagull's a bit more clear. Um, there's a little bit of white cloud down there that I don't really like. I'll get the eraser tool. And I've got options up there. Now I'm just going to erase it. Gone. Maybe this part here. Do I like that? I don't know. If I don't like it, it's gone. There we go. And there we have it. A simple little exercise to show how the layers are used in Photoshop and some of the basic techniques.